Hello, today we're going to be making Minecraft in Octane using the scatter object. You can also make this using the cloner and render instances, but we're going to be using the scatter node. This was inspired by the man right here, Mark Malta. I'll have his links in the description. As you can see, very nice stuff. So let's get started. First off, we're going to start off with a plane. And this is where we're going to scatter our cubes onto. So grab a cube, maybe go 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and then grab Octane Scatter. Then in here, change your surface to the plane and have it on vertex. And this is going to scatter onto the vertexes, as you can see. And then we just put a cube as a child of the Octane Scatter. So now, if I go and open up the live viewer, we've got something going on. We've got a bunch of cubes scattered on the surface. We could even raise this up. I like to do it until we have a tiny little gap between everything. That's looking good. And I'm going to also want to throw in uh, daylight because I'm too lazy to light the scene. So let's go like minus 25 on the rotation, that's looking good. And now we can start to build our effectors. So, oops, we're gonna want to go and grab a shader, so, or an effector from effectors, and then shader here. Drag this into your effectors tab, like so. And by default, this scales this up uh, uniformly over everything, which is not what we want. We're going to turn off scale, turn on rotation or pro, uh, position, and then put it up by 25 on the Y. Now I'm going to put something into the shader here, which is actually going to displace this. Um, I'm going to be using JS placement, which I've got a tutorial for in the top right. Plug on point. Uh, it's a free program, uh, and it's really good for making these cool little uh, shape thingamajiggies. So I'm going to drop this in here, and you should see immediately we've got a result, which is pretty interesting. So I'm going to go and then go into the deformer, or no, the parameter, and turn off the color mode. Um, because you can actually mix these colors if you have multiple shaders, which we're going to be doing. So if we go and grab another shader, turn off scale once again, turn on position, this time do minus 10 anything negative and then we're going to add a noise into our shading tab this time which will give us a slightly different result if we drop this into our effectors tab it's looking not very much like the reference but that's going to change i'm going to scale this up massively and uh, also going to scale up the contrast uh, we still aren't getting something quite similar to some of the the pictures in that project so what I noticed that uh, we could add a posterize and it kind of adds this little stepping to everything, which is it kind of matches what he was doing. So I'm going to scale this down a little bit. See what it looks like. Yep, that's looking good. Maybe reduce the amount that it's moving by, however. Something like that. And as you can see, we've got these colors here, but we don't have them in our live viewer. And the reason for that is because, you know, we've, we've not got a shader on this. So if we just go and create a shader, just a diffuse material, drag this onto our cube, and then go and open up our node editor. So what we're gonna what we're gonna need is we're gonna need an instance color, which is one of the newer nodes in here. Um, where's that instance color? Drop that into the diffuse, and then and then drop the shader into the color source. We're back, and now hopefully we should get something.
there we go crash for nothing so now we've got the colors on our on our object what we're going to do is we're going to remap these values using a gradient you could also use something like a gaussian spectrum anything you want really but uh, you get the most control with a gradient so I'm just going to scale this down so we can still see it but you know obviously we're going to want to focus on editing this so on both sides I'm going to have the same color I'm going to have just a shade of grey on both sides very interesting but on the inside we're going to have some color so um, let's just go with some striking colors so we can tell the difference and you're just going to want to line it up to where you can see it so the first step is right at the very beginning so if we go point one we should grab it and then if we go and then do green C we didn't have to add in an extra node there because what we're gonna have to do after this is we're gonna have to drag one node which I'm control clicking by the way or control dragging and then I'm gonna change this to like a, a red again let's go red and then we've got the next step and then the final step I think is great anyway which is the the right thing I think let's check yeah there's no other steps so we've got a Christmas a Christmas themed uh, render here let's see if I can get that there we go and then maybe change this to something else like that and uh, these are these are a bit too jarring for me, but if you are too lazy to go in and change every single one of these nodes, you can just go and grab a color correction and mess around with it here. So maybe desaturate it a bit, looking a lot more tasteful now. And then maybe pl play around with the gamma and even the, the hue. We can get some different colors. nice I think that's looking good I lied I want to I want to have some more washed out colors but also don't want to have them too uh, bright that's looking good um, and another another interesting thing you can do just as a little tidbit at the end you can go in here and then you can turn on the animation and then you can even loop this if you want. Easy peasy. Uh, remember to check out Mark Malta in the description. He inspired this. Go show him some love. And um, thanks for watching. Oh, thank God.